Hi, this is Andy again in the Red Hat Kernel Storage team. Today, I'll be talking about 10 new features that have been added to the LIO SCSI kernel target and target CLI in Fedora since the last video, about a year ago. These new features are available now in Fedora 18 and will be carried over to RHEL 7 as well. Before we look at the new features, let's look at our starting configuration. We're already in the target CLI configuration shell and have defined six storage objects. One file backed, one SCSI pass through, and four RAM disk, as well as two targets, one iSCSI target and one loopback target. The loopback target will just re-export any assigned LUNs back to this machine as SCSI devices. The iSCSI target has three initiator ACLs. Okay, let's get started. The first new feature is that assigning a LUN to an initiator ACL is easier. Before, you would define the storage object, then assign the LUN to the TPG, then map the TPG LUN to the initiator ACL. Now you can skip the middle step. Define the storage object, and then create the mapped LUN within an existing ACL, and it will map the LUN to the TPG automatically. So we already have storage objects. So if I go iSCSI, the name of the target, TPG1, ACLs, IQN, one of these, and I do create, mapped LUN 0, then I can do backstores RAM disk 1. In addition to creating the mapped LUN, it also created the TPG LUN. Next, the name you give a storage object is now referenced as the model of the exported LUN. LUNs could previously be identified from their unique IDs, but this is much friendlier. LSCSI, or SG Inc on the exported LUN will show the name you gave the storage object. We have this loopback uh, LUN here, and if we and that's SDC. So if we do LS SCSI for Dev SDC, we actually see the name that we gave it in Target CLI. Or if we do SG Inc. then we can see that's the product identification. So this can be very handy. Let's get back into target CLI. Third, LAO now has a method to give initiator ACLs easier to remember names, as well as the ability to group the settings for multiple initiators and change them all at once. This is via the tag and untag commands, which are under the ACLs configuration node. So I'm just going to go there now. I might tag a single ACL to give it a more memorable name than the hardware WWN. And then I can refer to that instead of the WWN. But this same tag mechanism also extends to grouping. I can give multiple ACLs the same tag and change them all at once. So I can tag another one of these initiator ACLs into web server. And then I'll tag the third one in there. So now all three are grouped together and all three have the same LUN now mapped to them. I could now create another mapping. Sorry, I need to go here. So all of those now have been configured with one command. If I, I can untag by using the untag command. So they have, the three ACLs have been split out and you can see they all still have the same configuration. Next, there's the info command. The info command returns info about a configuration node that may not be present in LS's output, but is still important. For example, it's an easy way to get the WWN of a storage object. So 
So sometimes you need to know that, but it's not in the it's not in the LS output, so that's good to have. You can also, if we go back to having all this these uh, tagged, then that can show you the constituent WWNs. The next new feature is improved IPv6 portal support. Target CLI makes it easier to create iSCSI portals that listen on IPv6 addresses. IPv6 addresses are now shown in the tab completion options. Use colon colon zero to listen on all configured IPv6 addresses. Note that the current Linux behavior is to automatically listen on all IPv6 addresses if you're listening to all IPv4 addresses. Just using the default 0000 when creating the portal is still likely what you want to do. And that'll listen on all IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. Next, WWN normalization. Target CLI has gotten a little more organized over how it handles WWNs. WWNs for all fabrics are now preferenced by the WWN type it is, in a way similar to iSCSI's handling of WWN types. Some examples are EUI, IQN, and IB. But don't worry, Target CLI is now better about accepting WWNs in alternate formats. This makes cutting and pasting WWNs less painful. For example, if I want to create an SRPT target, and I have colon separated format, I can do that, and it will accept it and then convert it into uh, the format that Target CLI likes. So the next feature is that Target CLI has improved logic for handling hardware-based fabrics. This allows us to make things simpler and only show fabrics for hardware present and properly configured on your system. For example, on this system we have InfiniBand, so the SRPT target, which requires InfiniBand, is listed. On another system that didn't have an IB card, but was configured for fiber channel over Ethernet, FCOE, the TCM FC fabric would appear. There are also fabrics like Loopback and iSCSI that do not depend on hardware support, and these will always be shown. Next, we now save 10 previous configs in Etsy target backup. We wanted to save old configs to make autosave safer, but beyond a certain point they're useless, so we just save 10. You can disable autosave on exit if you find it annoying. Next, we have increased the amount of info available in the summary. Backstores give sizes when possible and write through versus write back status. TPG and mapped LUNs give a little more info about which storage objects they map back to, so that's nice. Next, ICER support. ICER stands for iSCSI extensions for RDMA. If you have RDMA capable hardware that supports ICER, such as InfiniBand, and are running kernel 3.10 or later, you can enable it via the enable ICER command under the iSCSI portal configuration node. Unfortunately, we are not running kernel 3.10, so I won't be able to demonstrate that to you right now. Finally, a bonus improvement. We now handle names that end in numbers a little better, organizing them by the ending numerical value instead of strictly alphanumerically. We have ramdisk1, ramdisk2, and ramdisk10, whereas previously these would have been ordered ramdisk1, ramdisk10, and then ramdisk2. So that's just a, a small little thing that we were able to tidy up. So there you go. Many of these improvements were the result of suggestions from testers and Fedora users. Like all open source projects, it's still a work in progress, so please report issues via Bugzilla or participate in the Target CLI FB mailing list. Thanks for watching this screencast. See you next time.